Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unboxed coming at you today with something a little bit different than normal. Obviously there's no equipment here for me to unbox, nothing for me to review, but there are some very, very important changes coming to Chrome OS and that means some really significant changes for our beloved Chromebooks, Chrome boxes, Chrome bases, etc. All right, so what is this big announcement? What is this big change? It's very simple. Android apps, the Google Play Store as a whole, is coming to Chrome OS. And it is a huge deal. I could, I could say that, and if everybody kind of got what all that means, uh, you could just say that and, and, and be on with your day and be excited that that's coming. Um, but there's a lot to it. Uh, and there's some nuanced things, and there's some things to know, and things, honestly, mostly to be excited about. Um, and, and hopefully we're gonna take just a few minutes and digest a little bit of this stuff together. And so at I.O. last week, Google unveiled on Thursday, they didn't do it at the keynote, um, they just kind of slid this in Thursday morning, that it is official that Android apps are coming to Chrome OS. And what that means is, unlike Arc Welder that they released a couple years ago that gave you this emulated, siloed version of Android apps that sometimes worked and sometimes didn't, this is in, in fact the entire Play Store coming to Chrome OS. And somehow, I have no idea how they've done this, but the way that they have made this happen is um, over the last six months, a year or so, they've been changing the under underpinnings of Chrome OS to be able to handle all the apps and the runtimes and everything needed to run Android apps. And so what that means for you and for me uh, as, as Chrome users or potential Chrome users, if, if some of you are watching this and you haven't quite bought a Chromebook yet, but you heard some of the buzz, what that means then is when you take your Chromebook, eventually, uh, and we'll talk about availability here in a minute, you'll be able to just go to the Play Store and it, it sees your Chromebook exactly like it would see a, a, an Android phone or an Android tablet. Pick the app you want, download it, and run it. Um, and that's exciting because we're not talking about a handful of apps and we're not talking about um, the ones that developers choose to port over. There's no porting process and we're gonna kind of talk through that. Now I've got a couple of points that I wanna get to and we'll, we'll handle hopefully all of this in those points. So first, full Play Store. We're not talking about a GIMP version here, we're not talking about a handful of apps, we're not talking about partially developed apps, we're talking about the entire Play Store. So just as if you went out and bought a new, I don't know, Android tablets are pretty much dead, but I'm trying to think of one, uh, Pixel C. So you went and bought a Pixel C and you said, all right, I wanna get uh, some Angry Birds, I want Facebook, I want Twitter, same exact thing. You'll open the Play Store up, You'll choose the app you want, you'll hit download, it will install itself and it will open. Um, it's, it's amazing what Google has done here because instead of saying, hey developers, we have um, a Chrome OS over here that by the way, just this last week posted more, uh, more sales than MacBooks in the first quarter. So technically speaking, we're, uh, Chrome OS is the number two operating system. Um, we'll see how some of those numbers play out. but that Google didn't go to those developers and say, hey, uh, we're, we got a pretty popular platform. If you'll do a, steps A, B, and C, a little bit X, Y, and Z, then your app will work on Chromebooks. Instead, Google just kind of moved all that stuff out of the way and said, here, let's open the door wide open. Let's make this so when a developer sits down and creates an app for Android, it just works on Chrome OS. And I'm not kidding, if you look around on the internet, there's a few videos. Uh, the Verge is probably the best one I've seen, like just watching the thing in motion. Uh, Dieter Bone spends a little bit of time with a Chromebook Pixel 2 and, and Android apps on that Chromebook Pixel and it's really, really exciting because they just work. Uh, any app you want, they just work. There's a caveat, like if it, had, if it needs GPS for instance, and obviously your Chromebook probably doesn't have GPS, I don't think any of them do, um, then the Play Store will know that and go, hey, this isn't compatible with your device. And that's if GPS is a required function for it to run. And so. Uh, that's up to the developer to put that on there. Most of them have, uh, so that if you had a tablet that didn't have it and it was gonna break functionality, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't install. But the full Play Store is available. So whatever app you want, Microsoft Word, got it. You want any of the Microsoft Office suites, you want uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you want Snapchat, uh, any of these apps that work on your phones or your tablets will work natively. And that's the second point. Apps will run natively. They're not in an emulator. So 
you've heard about Arc, you've heard about Arc Welder and, and emulated apps and things running in a silo. This is not that. This isn't, isn't that at all, actually. This is uh, apps running completely native. And so when we say that, we're talking about native hardware and everything, so, and software components. Um, when you get a notification right now on Chrome OS down in that bottom tray, um, a thing pops up and you get a notification. Well, wouldn't it make sense then if your Android app sent you a notification and went there instead of appearing oddly in like a window or something? It's exactly what it does. Uh, it would make sense for these apps to be able to use Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and, and the radios in your Chromebook. And guess what? They can, just like you normally would see them. Um, it, it's pretty mind-boggling. It just works. Things just work. The Play Store recognizes your device as another Android device, basically, and you download the stuff and they just work the way they're supposed to. That being said, um, at this point right now, there's a couple ways that the, the windows resize. So you get the port dirt, you get landscape, you get full screen. Um, as Android N rolls out and, and app developers make their apps to where they're multiple size for you know the side-by-side -side viewing that Android N is bringing, then we'll talk about you know resizable windows and all that kind of stuff. So the future looks crazy bright uh, for this. And so, and because of that, like the GPU and CPU, all those resources are at the app's disposal. So if you want to put 3D games on your Chromebook, go for it. They will run and you'll find in the video, and I'll link it in the description below, you'll find in that video, 3D games work just fine. Because guess what? The hardware on a Chromebook, pretty much any Chromebook, is faster and better than the hardware that's in most phones. Um, so, I mean, take the Nexus 6P. It's got the Snapdragon 810 in it. Uh, great processor and all, but if you put that up against any Celeron processor, those processors whoop them pretty bad, especially the core I ones. Uh, when you move up to something like a Pixel or the Dell Chromebook or Toshiba that have uh, Core i3s, i5s, i7s, I mean, it's not even close as far as GPU and CPU uh, power compared to what's in, a, in, in the best phones that are available right now. So really, Android apps shouldn't have any issue whatsoever running on pretty much any Chromebook. So that's very, very excited. Um, having windowed apps, having apps that you can open up in a window and, and you can minimize and you know put things wherever you need to, it's going to close the productivity gap um, that Chrome OS has right now. So a lot of people say, I like it, it, it's nice and clean, but there's X, Y, and Z I can't get done for my job or, or for whatever it is I need to do. This is going to close that gap um, because as, as people get the apps they need natively to run on their Chromebook, they're, they will look at it and go, hey, for 400 bucks, this thing's a steal. I can do everything I need to do on this device, plus have a full desktop browser experience as well. It's the best of both worlds. Um, and so uh, when we start talking about you know productivity apps, we're talking about you know photo editing, we're talking about video editing, we're talking about audio editing, these things that right now on a Chromebook are just kind of painful if you even attempt to do them, if you can even find something to try with. Those things go away. And now while the, the app selection isn't the best in Android, guess what? Now we have uh, a platform that makes Android developers go, oh, I can write really awesome productivity apps for a big screen. Android tablets have been long since dead um, for the most part. They've just really struggled ever to take hold. And so when you have a product category that struggles, developers look at it and go, I don't want to invest my time in that. Android on the phone, great, sells like crazy. So yeah, I'll, I'll develop stuff for a phone. I'm not bothering with it for the tablet though. This could, will change that. It's not gonna be, it might change that. This will change uh, how developers see and view Android apps in general as productivity tools. And so as that happens, now more consumers also start. Because uh, in schools and in, in workplaces and enterprise, they're gonna start seeing more Chromebooks deployed. Uh, and by the way, it's just as secure as it always was because the, the secure parts of, of Android and each of these apps do run in their own individual kind of capsule that keeps it secure from everything else. And so they are sandboxed that way. Uh, so any of you that have security concerns with this, Chrome OS is as secure as it ever was. And you can choose, if you want to, to opt out of this and not even put these on your device. But as people in work environments and in school environments start adopting Chromebooks, and guess what? More consumers start getting them. As they bring them home, their family sees them, they think it's great, this works, it's simple. My kids can run all their games and apps and stuff on them. So uh, consumer adoption starts growing pretty rapidly, I think, in the next few months as this happens. And guess what? More adoption means more devices. It means two-in-ones, it means convertibles, it means all sorts of things. I imagine right now a, a Pixel C tablet running Chrome OS. Imagine the 
a 10 or 11 inch tablet that can detach and you can run any Android you, app you want, including an app launcher. So you could put Google Now Launcher on, run it full screen and have a full experience just like you're on an Android tablet. The minute you're done, close that launcher down, drop it into a keyboard, you're fully productive as well because you still have Chrome OS there. And I, for one, work from Chrome OS every single day. And there's certain things I've had to get around, but guess what? Those limitations are getting ready to go away. So this is amazing. This is, this is great news. Um, it's going to change fundamentally um, how well Chromebooks sell, how productive they are, how awesome they are in general. And so I'm obviously quite excited about the future of Chrome OS. And so you may be asking if you haven't read anywhere, like when, when is this coming? Right now there's three Chromebooks that are gonna get it within the next couple weeks. I think they're saying before or around mid-June. The Chromebook Pixel 2, um, so the 2015 edition, the Acer R11, which is their convertible kind of fold flat touchscreen, and the Asus Chromebook Flip. And so those three for obvious reasons, and actually you have kind of a nice, eh, decent uh, variety of performance there. You've got the Chromebook Pixel, which is a beast. Uh, the R11, is a little faster than the Flip, and the Flip, which is probably one of the weakest Chromebooks available as far as processor speed, but it's an awesome little device. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see how um, all the Android apps behave on the two. And so I will have at my disposal, I'm gonna have my uh, 2015 Chromebook Pixel LS, so the top of the spectrum here, and then at the bottom of the spectrum, for performance-wise, I also have the Asus Chromebook Flip, and I actually have the two gig version, I got a deal on it and figured I would have it and I'm going to put it in developer mode because developer mode are the ones that are going to get uh, the people in the dev channel with Chrome OS are the ones that are going to get this first and so you'll see it around uh, early to mid-June um, and I think what they're saying is August uh, it's going to hit the beta channel and then uh, full rollout by September is what they're saying so far so who knows it could roll up quicker it could take a little bit longer but we're probably going to see around fall probably surrounding the android n release as well because again multi windows and all that kind of stuff plays really nice into all this thing um, hopefully in the fall we're likely going to see a full rollout a full like hey this is this is here go get your apps go get your chromebook have fun with it it's going to be awesome and so i'm excited i hope you as either a potential or a current chrome os user I hope you're excited about this uh, because it's an exciting thing. We're in an exciting period for Chrome OS as shipments have grown. We're you know the number two OS now. Apparently, um, it's it's exciting to see where this could go and where I think this is really going to go. And so, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, uh, give a thumbs up if you like this video, check out the website, um, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to try to deliver up as much news about this because I think it's one of the biggest things that have happened. Uh, since I started this YouTube channel. Um, and so uh, keep it locked here. I, I, I will try to make many videos about as the apps start coming, how they work, what works, what doesn't, what's weird, what's buggy, all that kind of stuff. So that you can be ready if you're, if you're considering buying or thinking about buying uh, a Chromebook come uh, this fall. One last note, there is a list and I will post the link down below for that as well. There's a list uh, that Google has posted that tells you exactly what Chromebooks are gonna be available with this. And that pretty much it's anything that's come out in the last year and a half, two years. And so there's some notable exceptions there. Uh, the original Chromebook Pixel would run all this stuff just fine. Um, and so it's kind of sad right now that's left off. Who knows, that could change. I think these are the ones they're saying for sure we're gonna have it on these. It's a decent sized list. Um, but you can check and see if the current Chromebook you have is on there. And if it's not, decide whether or not it's time to kind of upgrade. Uh, and that's one of the best parts of Chromebooks, right? They're not that expensive. And so, um, again, hopefully uh, you're all excited about this. Thanks for watching. Again, thumbs up, like, uh, subscribe below, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.